Mill dot ranging. The mill dot reticle is a standard in tactical rifle scopes. The mill scale can be used just like a ruler to measure the height of a target. If the actual size of the target is known, then the range can be calculated using a simple formula. In the simulation, you will be using a modified mill dot reticle. One difference from a standard mill dot reticle is that a fifth dot takes the place of the broad post at the edge of the field of view. This reticle is a wire with one quarter mil dot spaced one milliradian apart. There are five mils between the center crosshairs and the center of the outside dot. In this reticle the dots are actually more oval than round. The length of the dot is 0 0.25 mil. A milliradian is an angular unit of measure. One milliradian equals one yard at 1,000 yards and one meter at 1,000 meters. If you know the height of the target in yards, multiply it by 1,000 and divide it by the mil dot size of the target to get the range. For precision work, mil readings need to be accurate to the tenth of a mil. U.S. Marine Corps standards measures to the eighth mil based on the size of the mil dot, then converts to tenths. In the simulations, you will need to go through the calculation to determine the range. In the field, you can use commercially available data books or other range calculating devices such as a mil dot master, but it is a good idea to have a solid background in range estimation using the equation. The mil dot reading for this target appears to be 1.3. Since we know the target is 30 inches high, 0.833 yards, we can enter the information into the formula. 0.833 times 1000 divided by 1.3 equals 648 correction, 640.8 yards. The actual range is 650 yards, so we came up a little short. However, at this range, we are only 2 inches low. Close enough. The horizontal mill dots can be used for hold off in wind conditions or as leads for moving targets. The vertical mill dots can be used for elevation hold over or hold under when there isn't time to make an adjustment to the elevation. This may come in handy if the first shot misses a target and a correction needs to be made before the target gains cover. In order to use mill dots for hold off, you need to convert the mill dot distance to minute of angle. This is where some confusion comes in. The reticle used in these examples uses the U.S. Marine Corps standard of 1 mil e equals exactly 3.438 minute of angle. The standard used by the Army is 3.6. Many people use 3.5 since it's in between the two. Suppose your rifle is zeroed for 100 yards and you have set your elevation for a target at 600 yards, which you have just hit. Suddenly a target pops up at 400 yards. You do not have time to readjust the elevation setting to engage the new target. Since there are 7.75 minutes of angle difference in elevation between 600 and 400, you need to hold under 2.25 mils, 7.75 divided by 3.25 four three eight to hit the closer target. Minute of Angle The Language of Long Range Shooting Circle A closed plane curve every point which is equidistant from a fixed point within the curve. Webster to understand what the term minute of angle means, we must first look at a circle. There are 360 degrees in a circle. By definition, there are 60 minutes of arc, or angle, in one degree. 360 degrees multiplied by 60 equals 
21,600 minutes of angle in a complete circle. The circumference of a circle equals 2 pi r. Circumference equals 2 pi r, where r equals the radius of the circle, and pi equals 3.1416. For any radius or range, one minute equals 0.000290 r. If r equals 100 yards, which is 3,600 inches, one minute at 100 yards is 0.0002908 times 3,600 or 1.047 inches. One minute of angle covers or substends a distance of 1.047 inches at 100 yards or 5.235 inches at 500 yards or 10.47 inches at 1,000 yards. For practical purposes, one minute of angle at 100 yards is rounded off to one inch. This value is close enough and easier to calculate for range work. However, note at extreme long ranges, the 1.047 inch value will give more accurate results. Suppose you have your rifle zeroed for 100 yards. You now want to engage a target at 450 yards. Your range card gives an elevation of 9.25 minute of angle at 450 yards. We know that at 450 yards, one minute of angle equals 4.5 inches. So this tells us that you need to aim 41.6 inches 9.25 times 4.5 higher than your 100 yard zero point in order to hit the center of a target at 450 yards. If your scope has a quarter minute adjustment, you would need to dial in 37 clicks, 4 times 9.25 for a 450 yard target. Some scopes have a one minute or half minute adjustments. Others have more precise adjustments of eighth minute clicks. Quarter minute adjustments are precise without the tedious settings of one eighth minute clicks. Half or one minute adjustments are too gross for precision accuracy. If you think in minutes rather than inches, adjustments can be made easily. For instance, suppose out to 800 yards, you are off from the center about 8 inches. This is one minute at 800 yards. Make a one minute adjustment to your elevation to be centered on the target. The wind drift is given in inches for a one mile per hour full value wind rather than minutes of angle on the range card. This is to allow for more precise measurements in the field. You will need to calculate the minutes for your windage setting once the velocity, direction, and range have been determined. The most challenging aspect of long range shooting is understanding the effects of wind on the path of the bullet. The effect of the wind has on the path of a bullet depends on the velocity of the wind and the direction in which it blows. The velocity of the bullet is relative to the air in which it travels. For example, in a tailwind, the velocity of the bullet is slightly less relative to the moving air than it would be in still air. Less velocity means less drag and the bullet hits a little high. Just the opposite happens in a headwind. The velocity of the bullet relative to the moving air is slightly higher. More velocity means more drag and the bullet hits a little low. Headwinds and tailwinds of lower velocities and at short ranges do not produce much of a difference in bullet drop. They can have an important influence at longer ranges and if the wind is strong. Headwind has slightly more of an effect than tailwind. 
Crosswind has a strong effect on the horizontal path of the bullet. Crosswinds that are exactly at right angles to the shooter's line of sight are called full value winds. Winds at 60 degrees from the right angle are called half value winds. Half value winds also have components of head and tail winds. A gust of wind close to the muzzle will have more of an effect on the bullet path than further down range. A cross velocity imparted early will be retained throughout the rest of the time the bullet is in motion. Newton's first law of motion. A gust downrange near the target will have little effect on the point of impact. When shooting in canyons or mountainous terrain, there can be vertical wind effects which lift the bullet. On target ranges, wind flags help determine the wind conditions. In the field, other objects such as trees and dust are observed to establish the velocity and direction of the wind. There are also reliable wind meters which give the value of the wind at the shooting position. One way to determine the direction and velocity of the wind is by observing the angle of heat waves, the mirage, seen through the scope. Heat waves are caused when hot air near the ground mixes with cooler air above. The bending of light as it passes through the different densities of air causes the mirage effect. The target will appear displaced for the same reason. The heat waves will bend in the direction that the wind is blowing. In lower velocity winds, the waves will be oblique to the vertical line. At around 12 miles per hour, the heat waves are horizontal. Duplicating the mirage effect in these simulations is difficult, so it will not be discussed in further detail. If a wind is coming from the left, 9 o'clock, the bullet will be displaced to the right of the target if no adjustment to the windage knob is made. Measured in inches, this is called wind drift. To hit the target, the bullet impact needs to be moved to the left. The windage knob on the scope is rotated to move the impact left. View the top of the scope knob by placing the mouse cursor over the knob. In the simulation, the windage is set by using the left or right arrow keys. The impact is moved to the left using the left arrow key, and to the right using the right arrow key. Your range card gives the wind drift in inches for a constant 1 mile per hour full value wind. The drift is stated in inches to determine a more preci precise final value than if the drift was in minutes. Once you have determined the velocity and direction of the wind, convert inches to minute of angle to get a windage setting. Example: Suppose you have a 10 mile per hour full value wind at 630 yards. That's 3.2 inches times 10 equals 32 inches. Divide 32 inches by 6.3 inches to get 5.08 minutes. Adjust your windage dial 5 minutes in the correct direction and you should hit the target. There can be different wind conditions all down the range affecting the path of the bullet. The only way to really understand the wind is to spend time shooting in it. Internal Ballistics The Science of Projectile Motion Within the Rifle External Ballistics The Science of a Bullet in Flight Terminal Ballistics The Science of the Motion and Action of the Bullet from the Instant of Initial Impact until it Stops Internal Ballistics Everything that happens within the rifle from the instant the primer is ignited until the bullet leaves the muzzle of the barrel is important in terms of repeatability. Some components of internal ballistics, primer, powder, pressure, cartridge, barrel rifling and vibration, recoil, bullet, action and chamber dimensions, and other mechanical properties. The terminal ballistics. The science of terminal ballistics involves everything that happens from the moment the bullet impacts the target until it comes to a stop. When the target is living tissue, 
Terminal ballistics is also referred to as wound ballistics. External ballistics. Once the bullet leaves the muzzle until the time it hits the target. Its path is influenced by two external forces. Gravity and the flow of air around the bullet. A solid understanding of external ballistics is imperative for long range shooting. Gravity is a constant force that causes acceleration of a falling object at a rate of 32 feet per second squared. If there are no gravitational pull on a bullet it would travel in a straight line. This could be called the line of departure. Gra gravity gives the bullet trajectory its curved shape. The longer the bullet is in flight, the faster its falling velocity. The line of sight is a straight line from the sight to the target. This line is above the barrel or bore line. Bullet drop is the vertical distance between the bore line and the bullet path below it. The bullet crosses the line of sight twice. The second intersection with the line of sight is the zero point. If you raise the angle of departure, increase elevation, the bullet will travel further and hit high. If the elevation is decreased, the angle of departure is less, so the bullet does not travel as far and will hit low. Any gun that is sighted in on a level range will shoot high if fired either upward or downward. The force of gravity works perpendicular to the horizontal or horizon when a bullet is fired at an angle. Its horizontal distance is less, so it spends less time be effect being affected by the gravitational force. At close ranges or angles below 15 degrees, the bullet drop distance changes very little. However, at long ranges and very steep angles, the change in point of impact is significant. The second factor that influences the bullet in flight is air resistance, also referred to as drag. Drag works in opposition to velocity. The higher the velocity of an object, the higher the resistance, which means more drag. Air density is affected by temperature, barometric pressure, altitude, and humidity. If the air density is high, then drag is increased. Low air density results in less drag. Air density decreases as temperature increases. As temperature increases, point of impact rises. Air density decreases at higher elevations, therefore drag is less. The point of impact will rise with increasing elevation. As a rule, slight corrections should be made with every 1,000 feet of change in altitude. Obviously, if you have sighted your rifle at a low altitude, then go to a very high altitude, your impact point will be significantly different at long ranges. Barometric pressure is a measure of air density. The higher the altitude, the lower the barometric pressure. The barometric pressure published by Weather Bureau has been adjusted for altitude so is not, is not a true measure of the density of the air. The barometric pressure used to calculate the elevation and windage values for the simulations is corrected standard barometric pressure for that altitude. Believe it or not, humid air is less dense than dry air at the same pressure and temperature. However, humidity has a minor effect on the point of impact and has only a slight effect even if going from one extreme to another and only at a very long ranges. <coughs> another force which causes drag in the bullet is the speed of sound. Sound travels at 1120.27 feet per second in standard air density. When a bullet travels faster than the speed of sound, shock waves form around the bullet. The bullet must push these shock waves and move the air along the surface of the wave front. This causes drag on the bullet, slowing it down. A second shock wave occurs behind the bullet as air rushes in to fill a void left behind as a traveling bullet passes, pushes the air aside. Ballistic coefficient of a bullet, C, is equal to the drag 
deceleration of the standard bullet divided by the drag deceleration of the actual bullet. The ballistic coefficient for the standard bullet is defined to be 1.000. Since the actual bullet usually slows down faster than the standard bullet, C is generally less than 1.0. The smaller the C value, the faster the bullet slows down. See the caliber classroom for examples. The ballistic coefficient for the round used in the simulations, Sierra 308 diameter, 175 grain, match king, equals 0 0.495. Sierra 338 250 grain, match king, equals 0 0.597. The Hornady .510 AMAX 750 grain equals 1.05, greater than 1. The science of external ballistics is complex with many factors influencing the trajectory of a bullet all at the same time. The serious long range shooter should consider an in depth study of this science to achieve accuracy. The range card, sometimes called a cheat card, is is a central tool for use in long range shooting. This card was prepared for a 308 caliber with a muzzle velocity of 2,635 feet per second, 2.6 inch height, sight height, in an atmospheric condition of 500 feet altitude, 59 degrees Fahrenheit, 78 percent humidity, standard barometric pressure. Ideally, a specific range card should be prepared for each atmospheric condition that the shooter may experience. In the simulation, all range cards for each caliber are created for a standard day, 500 feet altitude, 59 degrees Fahrenheit, 78 percent humidity. The shooter will need to mentally adjust for extreme temperatures or altitude. In this way, the effect of atmospherics on the bullet is graphically displayed. The elevation and windage values for this simulation were calculated using Sierra Infinity 5 exterior ballistics software. The elevation is rounded off to the nearest quarter minute for ease of use. The wind drift given in inches is calculated to the nearest tenth of an inch for a one mile per hour full value wind, nine or three o'clock. Therefore, if you have a five mile an hour wind at any range, the wind drift in inches needs to be multiplied by five a 10 mile per hour multiplied by 10, etc. Since the wind drift is in inches, the final value needs to be converted into minutes of angle in order to adjust the scope setting. Therefore, for a 5 mile per hour wind at 700 yards, 4.3 times 5 equals 21.5 inches. Convert 21.5 inches to the minute of angle. 21.5 divided by 7 equals 3.1 minutes of angle. At 700 yards, 7 inches equals 1 minute of angle. 3.1 minutes is the windage value. For a quarter minute scope, this would be 12 clicks. It requires a little more math to determine elevation or windage on ranges in between the ranges shown. In the following example, an elevation and windage value will be determined for a target at 730 yards with a 10 mile per hour wind. 730 yards, 10 mile per hour wind, the value could be obtained by getting a ballpark value. Let's see, 730 is a bit more than 725 which is halfway between 700 and 750. So the elevation is about 20 plus a little more, let's say 21.25. And the wind drift is a bit more than 4.6, so let's say 4.7 times 10 is 47 inches. To get a more accurate value for the wind, 5.0 minus 4.3 equals 0 0.7 inches. 30 divided by 50 equals 0 0.6. 0 0.6 times 0 0.7 equals 0 0.42 inches. 4.3 plus 0 0.42 equals 4.72 inches. 4.72 times 10 equals 47.2 inches. 47.2 divided by 7 equals 6.74 minutes. 6.74 times 4 equals 27 clicks. The range card gives wind drift at 4.3 inches for 700 yards and 5.0 inches for 750 yards for a 1 mile per hour full value wind. 
To get an exact wind drift for 730 yards, divide 30 yards by 50 yards to get 0 0.6. This is a proportion of the 50 yard spread. Multiply 0 0.6 times 0 0.70 inches, the difference between 5.0 and 4.3, and you get 0 0.42. Add 0 0.42 to 4.3. The windage is 700 yards to get a value of 4.72 inches of drift for a 1 mile per hour full value wind at 730 yards. For a 10 mile per hour wind, multiply 4.72 times 10, which gives 47 inches of drift at 730 yards. To calculate the Minutes of wind divide 47 by 7.3. One minute of angle equals 7.3 inches at 730 yards. To get an exact value of 6.74 or a 7 minute wind. The ballpark estimate was pretty close, in fact right on. With practice the tedious math calculations won't be necessary. 4.7, so let's say 4.7 times 10 is 47 inches. 4.72 times 10 equals 47.2 inches. You would expect that the wind drift for half value winds to be half of the full value, but that isn't the case. The chart shows the wind drift in inches for a 10 mile per hour wind at 600 yards at different directions. Standard day, 308, 175 grain. You would expect the drift at 130 and 430 to be half of the full value drift of 28.90, but it's more. This is because the wind is at an angle. Trigonometry comes into the formula for determining the wind drift for half value winds. The full value wind drift is multiplied by the sine of the angle of the half value wind. The actual values are slightly different due to the component effects of head or tail winds. The simulation use a half value wind, so for accuracy multiply the full value amount by 0.707. The three calibers chosen to demonstrate long range shooting techniques have several things in common. They are practical in that the ammunition and components are re readily, relatively easy to obtain, capable of extreme accuracy and magazine fed, they are top choices for field deployment. The AR-10 at 12 to 15 pounds is the lightest, most fieldable of the long guns. Ammunition is easy to obtain at a low cost. Shooting a 308 diameter cartridge with a 175 grain bullet is accurate out to 800 to 1000 yards. With a balanced system, recoil can be reduced so that the weapon can be self spotting. The Windrunner 338 weighs 24 pounds, making it a crew served weapon. Shooting a 338 diameter, 250 grain bullet can be accurate out to 1500 yards. The 338 is relatively new caliber, but is gaining in popularity with long range shooters. Therefore, ammunition is becoming more readily available through several suppliers such as Black Hills Ammunition. Low recoil pulse contributes to ease of shooting and high hit potential. The Windrunner 50 BMG Tactical Bolt Action Rifle weighing 34 pounds is the highest state of development of a shoulder fired weapon in this caliber to date. Shooting a 510 diameter 750 grain bullet can be accurate out to 2000 yards plus. High recoil makes it a crew served weapon. Ammunition and components are easily obtainable. With the multiple types of ammunition available for military applications, this rifle is a very versatile system. Custom loadings for each of the given calibers has been chosen for their proven performance out of respective rifles. Heavy, heavier bullets have a flatter trajectory.
heavier bullets are affected less by wind conditions. As a bullet approaches the speed of sound, around 1100 feet per second depending on air density, it will become unstable. The 308 caliber with a 168 grain bullet is not a good choice past 800 yards where its velocity approaches the speed of sound. The 50 cal bullet does not slow down as fast as the other calibers because it's a very high, it has a higher ballistic coefficient. Sporting calibers such as the 300 wind mag shooting a 308 diameter 190 grain bullet has a high impact velocity but is not practical as a military weapon due to ammunition availability among other things. Moving targets are difficult to hit. A target can move in a consistent manner and be in continual sight of the shooter. A stop and go target can be moving in an erratic manner with no set pattern but is in constant sight. A bobbing target can appear briefly then re-establish cover. One way to engage moving targets is with the tracking method. The shooter tracks the target with the crosshairs placed ahead of the target according to the lead. This technique is used when the shooter is very close to the target or when the target is moving at a high rate of speed. In a variation of tracking method, used for engaging stop and go targets, the shooter centers the crosshairs as close as possible to the target. When the target stops, the shooter fires. At longer ranges, greater than 300 yards, and when the target is moving at a constant pace, the ambush technique the ink is preferred method of engagement. The crosshairs are placed ahead of the target and remain stationary until the target walks or runs to a predetermined point. The lead on the horizontal reticle. The rifle is fired at the moment that the leading edge of the target reaches the lead point. Then the target walks or runs into the bullet. To determine the lead point, three variables need to be considered. One the time of flight of the bullet, two, the speed of the moving target, and three, the angle that the target is moving relative to the shooter's line of sight. The bullet's time of flight is the lag from the time the round is fired until impact. Time of flight increases as range increases. The bullet slows down. The chart shows the time of flight for a Sierra Match King 308 diameter 175 grain round with a muzzle velocity of 2,635 feet per second. Moving targets walk at an average of 3 miles per hour or 52.8 inches per second. You can see that a target walking at long range can cover a lot of distance by the time the bullet reaches the point of impact. If you convert inches to minute of angle, it is simple to determine the lead point in mils by dividing the minutes by 3.438. One mil equals 3.438 minute of angle. A target runs at 6 miles per hour, so the lead would be doubled. The challenging part of engaging moving targets is determining, determining the actual speed of the target. In addition, the target is at an angle to the shooter which reduces the width of the hit area. <clears throat> Once the lead is determined, the shooter uses the horizontal mill scale for the hold. Concentration should be on the mill lead, not on the target. At the exact moment the lead edge of the target reaches the lead point, the shooter fires. <clears throat> 